Okay, today we're going to be putting the foam down. This is an inch and a half. The two inch was just a lot more expensive. And I didn't think I'd get that much of an increase in the R value out of it. So one thing to look at is this foam has got a tin foil side and the non tin foil side. The tin foil side will actually reflect the heat. We want it to um, absorb the heat and to reflect the cold. So the tin foil side goes down in this application. If you're doing a roof, um, like this is going to be sheeting the tin foil side, but go out because you don't want the outside temperature uh, radiant heat coming in. But we want to trap this heat. So we're going to put the uh, foil down so when the radiant heat is going, it'll hit the insulation and um, help absorb it. At least that's how I understand it. So um, the girls and uh, grandpa is going to be coming out here later to help lay this down. And then i um, got my yellow roll of plastic over there. That's 10 mil. It's actually made for going under these slabs. We have 210 feet, 14 feet wide. So this is a 70 foot long slab. So we are going to just have enough to get done. Um, it's gonna be close. But what we're gonna do is when we uh, had the forms built, if remember we had all this plastic laying over there, and uh, that's six mil plastic, and it's not considered what you're supposed to be using anymore. But we're going to use that along the edges and underneath the seams, and then we're going to put the uh, um, 10 mil over it. And then we'll use the six mil to wrap up on the sides, like I said in a prior video, so that we don't have a lot of spillage underneath our, our forms once it's poured. So we should end up with a little bit of extra on this side. We're going to work from the uh, south end north. When we get to the north side, we're going to have some extra strips and we will cut those into uh, long strips to go over the seams as well. And this area that's cut out will give us a bunch of little pieces too. We're going to use every little bit we have to cover everything up. At that point, we'll start putting the rebar down. It's supposed to be really windy tomorrow. So the goal today is to get all the insulation down and um, all the plastic down and then lay rebar out on it. I hope we space it out all the way across and all the way back so that tomorrow we can really hit it hard on getting the rebar and everything in and the uh, rails and uh, maybe start doing some of the radiant floor. We've got storms tomorrow night and storms on Friday and then I think Saturday is okay and then I think Sunday night and Monday and then Tuesday morning is back to heavy rain and then uh, Wednesdays back up to like 80 and then so we're anyways we're hoping to pour on probably Thursday or Friday morning is the goal we did close on our house yesterday so now the clock is ticking for us to get out we did uh, an early closing with uh, late possession for the buyers reason being is that the whole COVID-19 thing and everything shutting down left and right we wanted to make sure we could get it get it closed and then our original closing date was on the on the 15th 15 days from now but We've got uh, a little bit of time to get it closed, that's done, start work on this, get moved, and then get out of there. So our goal is to get this done, and then I can't work on it for a week. I'm going to let it sit for a week after we uh, get it poured, and during that week is when we'll move. And then at that point I can come out and start uh, start the framing. So I've got my GoPro on that cam tree right over there. So when everyone gets out here, we'll turn that on and do a time lapse of us. Uh, running around like ants trying to get this done.
start putting rebar down now and it's time to bend all these over. These go down into the pudding and it ties your pudding to your slab. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard work. It's hard work. <laughs> yeah. Plastic-wise, we got this is number four half-inch rebar. So when they say number, each number is an eighth of an inch. So number four is pretty common as half-inch. Three is three eighths. Two is a quarter. Well, we're, yeah, we're in the process of moving. We actually closed on our house yesterday, and we still have, thankfully, the, the buyers have been gracious enough to let us have another two weeks to move out just with everything going on. Um, so we'll be doing that. So we've got that going on, regular work, kids figuring out school. That's going to be fun. Moving, of course, doing this. Been hauling lots of rock. We hauled a load over. Oh, a chicken coop. That's a big one. So the girls and Grandpa Barry have been working on that. And we've been hauling. We're trying to use a lot of the, repurpose a lot of the wood that we have. We have a lot of little projects with a lot of scraps. Yes. And everyone always makes fun of all the scraps I keep. Use them. <laughs> like on this. Put all this in the AutoCAD, so I knew exactly how much plastic we needed, and it worked out pretty much perfectly. All I have is that little, probably a little less than 10 square foot piece of plastic left. And this plastic is about 550 bucks a roll, so we don't want to waste it. We don't want to waste, yes. We were saying earlier how with the virus thing how we can't go to the gym. I think we're getting a good <laughs> We're getting a good workout, yeah. When I've been doing exercises with the girls and we did weights. Well I did weights. They didn't do use any weights, but they still did the movements a couple days ago and I'm hurting from it. I'm not old. I'm not old. I did deadlifts with heavy weights. And then we've been bending over all day. Anybody who does leg workouts knows that it hurts, I think, the most the second day. And you're going to hurt tomorrow. And the, the next Army, day. And I ran PT. I had the guys hold weights in their hands and do lunges. It was so hilarious watching them walk the next day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we had to sit in a patrol car and we had a, like a hemorrhoid donut. We'd pass out because our asses would hurt so much. <laughs> Those, those donut seat things. Yep. It was funny. Can you see Valerie in the background. I don't think you can see her get the kayak out. I'm gonna go to Frog Pond. Frog Pond got fish It does. What did we stock it with? Just, Just a few, bluegill. A few bluegill. Put a six bluegill in there Since we had such a mild winter, we're really concerned about mosquitoes and, and everything. So, hi! You're doing an awesome job. Go get your sister. Did you grab the paddle? Valerie, did you remember to grab the paddle? <laughs> Is that a no? You gotta get the paddle. Okay. 
All right, so that's it for today. We had the GoPro going, so we'll... It's still going, right? Maybe out of battery by now. Okay, well... If there is GoPro footage, then we will play that for you guys. We've been using that all day. So we'll get as much done as we can. I need to go plant some trees that came in. Um, two pear trees and two cherry trees. They were supposed to be in a month ago, but, you know, depending on weather, they came in today. So I need to go get those in the ground. So we'll see you later. And this is what we call frog pond. <laughs> the girls are stuck. Okay. We're almost done. All Bye. right. Let's give us a second or two. It's not very deep, like at all. As you can see, it's the plants have actually grown some since yesterday. If you can see down in there. so pretty. When we bought the land back in September, we had come out here and it was so magical because it was green, of course, but it was so full of dragonflies. It was absolutely gorgeous. I saw a dragonfly a little bit girl. Did you really? Wow.